today we are making Nan's sugar cookies in Dining on a Dime volume one on page 353. You can see I use the chocolate drop cookies or the Nan's sugar cookies a lot in my cookbook. <laughs> I actually use my own cookbook guys, I really do. This recipe is in the description below on our website at livingonadime.com. So I was doing another video and I showed how to measure shortening. So I will show you guys real quick, but guys look for ingredients in different places. I found this can of shortening here at a garage sale from a restaurant that was going out of business. And I paid a dollar. I think this is like 10 or $15 now for this huge one. And I paid a dollar for this. So look at garage sales, thrift stores. I've actually found brand new, not expired food at, at thrift stores also. What I did was I put one and a half cups of water in there and I'm gonna measure, so can you see, until I get to two cups on my water. And then I will know one and a half or two minus one and a half is a half a cup. Boom, there we go. Okay, see it's, see it's floating on there. Okay, we're right at two. So now I know this is a half a cup. Oil and water don't mix. So I just drain it off. I do that twice because this recipe needs one cup of shortening. Now, normally I half this recipe, but we have friends coming. And so I think we will be eating these up quicker than just the two boys that I normally have. Okay. Then I need two cups of sugar. I always keep a measuring scoop in my sugar. Right now I have a half a cup one. So I'm gonna measure two cups, which is four half cups. This way I don't dirty another measuring cup just for sugar, okay? Then I just use a hand mixer. You can use a big KitchenAid if you want, but I don't really like big kitchen aids. I think they're expensive and quite frankly, not worth the money, but I know a lot of people like them. So don't send me kitchen aid, aid, uh, hate. Okay. My vanilla, my homemade vanilla. And no, I don't use this for medicinal purposes later, but <laughs> I made a video. And so I have a whole bunch left. This recipe is in our dining on a dime volume one and also on our website livingonadime.com. We'll put the link in the description below. Okay, now you're going to mix these first four ingredients together. Now, once again, I use a non-slip bowl right here. I'll put a link in the description below for that. If you don't have a non-slip slip bowl, this is a cut down silicone mat I had. You can use that. Or you could use a shelf liner that's grippy also, if you don't have the non-slip bottom. This way your bowl's not jumping all over the counter. Now, why do you cream your sugar and shortening together? Because it helps get them coming together so they will be smooth in your cookies. Next, we're gonna add our buttermilk. Now, I do not have buttermilk on hand. And it drives mom nuts when I do this recipe because buttermilk does actually work a little bit better, tastes a little bit better but I almost never have it on hand, but what I do have is sour milk. And sour milk works great in this recipe. Now, if you don't have sour milk, just add a teaspoon or so of vanilla, or vanilla, oh my goodness, vinegar in your milk, and it will sour it, and then you will have the acidity that you need. Do you have to wait for it to sour it? Or it just immediately sours it? Well, do you have to wait? Um, yeah, just like two minutes or so. Not very long. Okay, now you can kind of see here, see how it's starting to curdle a little bit? It's kind of hard to see on video, but it's starting to curdle. And that is your sour milk or buttermilk substitute, okay? So I got my milk in. I'm just gonna add that. 
Put your mixer on low so that it doesn't spray everywhere. Now we're gonna add our baking powder. Three teaspoons or a tablespoon of baking powder. Don't forget to scrape your baking powder on the side there. There you go. And then baking soda. Now you will notice in recipes, whenever you use buttermilk or sour milk, there's always baking soda because it's the reaction between the acidity of the buttermilk or milk and the baking soda that causes a reaction to make these cookies fluffy. Okay, now I'm gonna mix these in first. And then we're gonna add our flour. Okay, normally I just scoop from down there, but for the video, I'm just gonna show you. Okay, this takes six cups of flour. Oh dear, did I get the right bowl? <laughs> I can't remember if I, I always do a half batch. So <laughs> I hope this all fits in the bowl. <laughs> I guess we'll see. Okay, so I got three cups in there. <laughs> You'll be mixing real slow. <laughs> flour with the mixer and then the second half of the flour I do by hand. What should did we, I do? I was just thinking should we be throwing flour at each other like they do in the <laughs> Christmas movies? <laughs> we should do that! <laughs> Okay. Okay. Let's. Okay, Jack. You gotta come film mom and dad making cookies together, like the Hallmark movie. Oh no. We're supposed to be like making it together. Okay. Like we're, this. We're making. Oh. I'm supposed oh, to. We're, hold we're gazing. Cup. We're gazing. Oh, we're gazing. We're gazing. Okay. Oh. Oh. oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's pretty much the same. Oh, and then we gaze. Let me get the look. Oh, give me a kiss. And then this was like, and then somebody comes in. <gasps> <gasps> we almost kissed, but we didn't in the middle of the night because everyone makes cookies at two o'clock in the morning. <laughs> oh my goodness! Now we have a huge mess to clean up. <laughs> Sorry. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Why does that have to be birth to be Actually, you do have to flour all over yourself now. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, that's fine. We'll just keep trucking. Okay, so now we're gonna get this all mixed up really well. This actually isn't the best uh, thing to be mixing with, but I don't believe in doing more dishes than I need to, so I'm just gonna make it work. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, yum. Okay, I have to say, growing up as a kid, this was probably my favorite dessert. And when mom would make this, I would come and she would give me the raw cookie dough. I know all of you egg people are having a stroke right now, but it's okay. Um, <laughs> I live to be 50, 50, almost one years old. Okay. Here's another tip, guys. When I have an empty container like this, so I don't have such a mess, <laughs> I put my spoons and stuff in there until I'm done cooking, okay? Okay, I gotta clean up just a little bit here. <laughs> and then we're gonna put it on the cookie sheet. Get everything. 
Now normally I refill my flower jar, but today I'm going on vacation tomorrow. So I'll just do it later because we got more stuff we gotta do. <laughs> Alright, put my this out of the way. Put this. Oh, I need my sugar. Throw this away. Wash this. This is dead. Okay. Now, actually, let me just go ahead and put up my mixer too and just get it out of the way. down everything as soon as you're done cleaning because then it doesn't get to be a hard stuck on mess and then you don't have to wait and wait and wait for it to um, soak when you want to wash it okay all right get that out of the way and that. okay now we are going to Bake our cookies. Oh my goodness, we got it all over the floor. <laughs> <laughs> you and your brilliant ideas. <laughs> we should ask somebody from there if, if there's a trick to do it <laughs> so that you look like the movie people afterwards. <laughs> Okay, this is my very well-loved cookie sheet. I will put it in the description below for you. Now, I like using the Silpat. Mom doesn't. You can use parchment paper. You can just grease your pan. However you want to do it. I like that it has the little circles on it. I do too, because then I can, you know, measure better. Now, I use an ice cream scoop. Mom just uses a spoon. But this way, it gets exactly the right amount what we should do is we should have me make this recipe and then mom make this recipe. Bake off. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> I'm making sugar cookies, Jack. What do you think? Mm. Are you excited for sugar cookies? Yeah. Tara versus Nan. <laughs> Who would be the... Who would be the underdog? <laughs> How mom does it is she wraps a dish towel. I don't have a dish towel because we just moved into our new kitchen, but she wraps a dish towel around a cup and then dips it in her flour and goes like this to smash down her cookies. Okay, that's how mom does it. Now, I, on the other hand, because you need to put just a little bit of water on the top, what I do is I just don't, I just skip that step and I just go ahead and put my fingers in a little bit of water and just smash it down with my fingers. So you do it however you want. It doesn't really matter how you go about it. Don't get it soaking wet. Now, you can see mom's looks a lot prettier than mine, but I'm a lazy cook, so. I don't, um, I don't do it that way. Okay, so then take water. If you do do the flour method and put a little bit of water, tap the top, then you're just gonna take your sugar and you're gonna sprinkle it on top just like that. Now, I do have these colored sprinkles, sugar, colored sugar, that I just wanna get used up. So I'm gonna use these for some of these because I just want to get these used up. And it's a party anyway. It's a party. Honey, did you notice it's blue and pink? I've got an announcement. <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> I just thought I'd see your reaction. Okay. You can't fool me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So then you're gonna preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Whoops, maybe, well, good grief. 
Okay, and for this, it's best to go ahead and let it preheat to 350. So we're gonna give it just a minute to get up to that, and then we'll put these in the oven. Okay, I've got a roast in the oven for tonight, so I'm gonna stick these on top and let them bake. Ah, that looks just about perfect. So, yep. So if you touch it and it's super soft, then and doughy, then they're not done. But see how these are, are firm? We're gonna let these cool on the tray. Now you can see mom's looks more nice than my rustic ones, but it just depends on how you wanna do it. How much work do you wanna to go to? Yep. <laughs> we'll let these cool and then we'll have a taste tester. Okay. Oh man. This is so tempting. I will say though, guys, if you're gluten-free, dairy-free like me, get the gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. And the ones I have in there are almost the same. They are really darn tootin' close. Okay, now for the next batch. Yeah, I think they're good. Okay, I'm gonna let them cool, and then we'll take them off. I put the rest of the cookie dough in a container, and then the day after tomorrow, when we have friends coming, I will bake them up and have fresh sugar cookies. This will last in your refrigerator about a week, give or take, or you can freeze it if you'd like. Okay, we have our sugar cookies. Okay, while you're taste testing this, Candace Cameron Bure, please tell us how you look so lovely after your flower flipping in the movies. We want to know how you guys do that. <laughs> we were trying, but we had to go later and get, get the makeup department to <laughs> sort of remove some of it. Okay, taste it. Let's see what you think. Mmm. Very soft and moist. Mm-hmm. Not yeah. dry. They're very fluffy. Aren't they the best in the whole world? Mm-hmm. Yum. Yum. Delish. You still have some uh, flour in your hair there, sir. <laughs> That's why we need Candace to help us figure out how to do this. <laughs>